Welcome, my dear student, in our math program for secondary three. Dear student, now we are taking new lesson in dynamic. It's called the first law of Newton or Newton first law. أعزائي طلبة وطلبات شهادة الثانوية العامة أهلا بكم. النهاردة إن شاء الله هناخد درس جديد في الديناميكا اسمه القانون الأول لنيوتن. طبعا إحنا عارفين إن القانون الأول لنيوتن هو إن الجسم بيحتفظ بحالته من حالة السكون أو حالة الحركة ما دام لا يؤثر عليه جسم خارجي. أتمنى أن نوفق إن شاء الله في هذا الدرس بإذن الله. نيوتن's first law. At the first types of forces nuclear magnetic electric gravitation mechanics types of forces all types of forces we have five types of forces now we are start from newton's first law what is the newton first law everybody Dear student, we deserve in a state of rest or of moving uniformly unless acting open by an unplanned external forces by an external effect. Remark, the body at rest, we deserve at rest unless act open by a force to move at and the body in a uniform motion be served at motion unless act or been by a force change its motion. Number two, in the formulation of the law, the expression force means resultant of all forces which acting or in the body the force is measured by Newton unit. Number three, the law Newton, the two states, rest or moving, of rest and uniform motion, natural state of the body. Remember, the law Newton means the two states of rest and uniform motion in natural state of the body. When the resultant of the forces acting in a body equals zero. Number four, the law show the body which is at rest or moving uniformly in a straight line. Inertia principle, everybody as much as in each state in divorce to preserve its present state whether it be of rest or of moving uniformly forward in straight line. A force acts the effect force acts the effect which change or tries to change the state of the body, collision of the rest, or of moving forward in a straight line. This means of force, effect, which to change from a state or from moving forward in a straight line. Example. Look at in the opposite figure, we have body. The first, we know body at rest and the system of force acting on it. In the opposite figure, look at, we have the unknown forces act on the body from the rest. We find the value of the first force and the second force. Solution. Look at the body is at rest state. The vertical are in equilibrium. 
we have in equilibrium F2 plus 40 equals what? Equals 70. The equation F2 plus 40 equals what? Equals 70. What is the value of F2? 30 Newton. Why? Because F2 equals 70 minus 40. We have body in arrest is in equilibrium. Vertical equation is F2 plus 40 equal 70. In this case, F2 equal 30 Newton. Horizontal forces in equilibrium also. F1 equals 20 plus F2. Then F1 equal 50. Why? Because F2 equals what? Equals 50. We have two forces, F1 and F2. F1 50, F2 30. The body act on it. F2 in vertical motion or vertical equation, F2 plus 40 equals 70. In this case, or in equilibrium state, must F2 plus 40 equals 70. In equilibrium, in this case, F2 equals 30. F1 equals F2 plus 20 yot. F1 equals 20 plus F2 by substitution about F2 equals 30, then F1 equals 50. Dear student, in this example, we know that the body in N equilibrium, then we have two equations. The first is vertical equation, the second is horizontal equation. By substitution, about given to find the value of unknown forces. Look at another example. Look at the student in the opposite figure, a body act on it. More forces. We have two equations in an equilibrium. Find body moving horizontal in the direction shown. Look at the right body moving of the right. When body moving in the body, horizontal body moving horizontal in the direction of the right, we have more forces act on the body. Left hand side, 300 Newton, 120 Newton, and right to F1, 90 Newton, in vertical, 400 Newton, up, F2 down, 240 down. What is the required? This body is moving with uniform velocity of magnitude 8 meter per second. Find the value of F1 and F2. Solution. Look at the student. The body is in uniform motion state. What do you mean in uniform motion state, dear student? Horizontal are in equilibrium. Horizontal equation. Dear student, we have the first equation 2F1 plus 90 equals 300 plus 120. Why? Because the body is moving with uniform motion. Uniform motion means the horizontal equation is 2F1 is an equilibrium plus 90 equals 300 plus 120. After that, find the value of F1 by 
adding 300 plus 120 minus 90. After that, divide it to answer is 165 Newton. In horizontal, then F1 equals 165 Newton. Therefore, vertical are in equilibrium when 2 or F2 plus 240 equal 400 to find the value of F2. Look at the student 240 plus F2 equal 400 then F2 equals 400 minus 240 equals 160 Newton. Dear student, we know that if the body is moving with uniform motion, we have two equations. The horizontal equation is an equilibrium, the left-hand side equal right-hand side. The vertical equation also is an equilibrium to find F1 and F2. Dear student, look at another example. This example, train, a train of mass 200 ton, moves under the action of resistance proportional of the square of its velocity. If this resistance is 9.6 kilogram weight per ton of the mass, remember mass of train is 200 ton. If the resistance is 9.6 kilogram weight per ton of mass of the train, when the velocity of the train is 72 kilometer per hour. Find the maximum velocity for the train if the engine of the train can pull it with a uniform force of magnitude 4.32 ton wet. Dear student, the required is maximum velocity for the train if the engine of the train can pull with uniform force of magnitude 4.32 ton weight. Solution. Dear student, resistance R1 per 9.6 per 1 ton. Remember, mass of train 200 ton. R1, resistance of the train 9.6 times 200 equals 1920. V1 or the first velocity is 72 kilometer per hour. Let resistance R1 when the velocity of the train V1. There is a proportion between R1 and V1. R2 resistance when the velocity is V2. What is the relation between resistance and velocity X and student? Since resistance is proportional to the square of its velocity, what you mean? R1 over R2 equal V1 square over V2 square. Remember, R1 over R2 equals V1 square of over V2 square. R1, the train reaches the maximum velocity when the res resistance is completely equal to force of pulling the train. What you mean? V2 maximum velocity for the train, therefore R2 is 4.4320 ton weight. 
by sub substitution R2 with kilogram multiply 1000 ton each ton is 1000 kilogram is R2 becomes 4320 kilogram weight when R1 over R2 equal V1 square plus V2 square why because there is proportional between resistance and the velocity R1 over R2 is equal V1 square plus V2 square by substitution is 1920 over 4320 then by substitution we find the value of V2 by using cross multiplication we find the velocity of the train is 100 and eight. Remember, dear student, we have relation is the mean relation between R and V. R1 over R2 equal V1 square over V2 square. By substitution, in this equation, find the value of Vt, uh, Vt, V2, V2, the velocity of the train, when reach the distance, then V2 equals 108 kilometer per hour. Now we are translate to important example. Parachute land vertical is the parachute is open if the total weight of the parachute and equipment is 90 kilogram watt. The resistance, resistance is proportional to the square of its velocity. Remember, the student, resistance in this case is proportional to square of its velocity. And long and maximum velocity of the parachute is 15 kilometer per hour. What is required? Find the air resistance of the parachute when his velocity is 10 km per hour. Solution. Dear student, look at we have parachute reach the land maximum velocity when resistance is equal to the weight of parachute and his equipment. What is the if R1 is the air resistance, V1 velocity of parachute. Remember, we have R1 the air resistance when V1 is velocity of parachute. Therefore, R1 is 90 kilogram wet when v1 equals 15 kilometer per hour remember there is relation between resistance r and square of the velocity r1 equals 90 kilogram wet v1 equals 15 km kilometer per hour if r2 is the air resistance when the velocity of velocity equals V2. What is the relation? R2 is unknown when V2 equals 10. By using the relation, therefore, R1 over R2 equals what? X and student. V1 square over V2 square. Remember, dear student, remember, dear student, this example is very important. In our life, we show the parachute drop from the plane. The parachute is, has weight. 
and equipment has also it. This relation between resistance of the air and its velocity. R1 over R2 equal V1 squared plus v over V2 squared. What you mean? The relation between resistance of the air equal the relation or the ratio between square of the its velocity. Remember by substitution about three known to find the resistance of the air. Look at R1 over R2 equal V1 square over V2 square. What is the value of R1 90? R2 unknown. V1 equal 50. V2 equals 10. By using cross multiplication to find the resistance of the air. R2 equals 40 gram weight. Remember, dear student, there is relation between the resistance of the air and Square of the velocity is directed relation. When R2 equal 40, V2 equals 10. But when R1 equal 90, then V1 equals 15 square. 15 square 225. 10 square is 100. We cross multiplication. To find the value of R2 equals 40 gram weight. Look at the student another example. A body moves in a straight line under the action of three forces. The first force F1 for I plus 3K, F2 I plus 4G minus 15K. Remember, dear student, body moves in a straight line under action of three forces. The first force, F1, 4I plus 3K. Second force, I plus 4G minus 15K. Third force, F3, such that its displacement vector S is given as function of the time by the relation S is 2Ti minus Tj plus K. Find the magnitude of the third force F3. Solution. Since the student Displacement S is equa to equation 2Ti minus Tj plus K. Therefore, what is the velocity is derivative ds respect to the time t. What is the derivative ds respect to time t? 2I minus J. Therefore, we find acceleration by using derivative of velocity respect to the time t. Then, in this case, a equals zero. Why? Because the constant v is constant two i minus j, but a dv by dt is constant. Derivative of the constant equals zero. The body moves with a uniform velocity of magnitude root 5 velocity unit. Then F1 plus F2 plus F3 equals zero. By substitution about F1 and F2 to find the value of F3. F3 in this case equals negative F2 negative F1 or F3 vector equals negative F1 minus F2 
we find the value of vector F3 or force F3 by subtraction from F2 from negative F1. Answer is negative 4, 0, negative 3, plus 1, negative 4, 15. Then F3 vector negative 3i, negative 4j, plus 12k. By using norm f of 3, negative 3 for all power 2, plus negative 4 power 2, plus 12 power 2, f3 equal 13 fourths unit. Dear student, look at f3. What is the, the force 3? The body act on it three forces, F1, F2, F3. We have F1 and F2, F3 unknown. We know that the sum of F1 plus F2 plus F3 equals zero. By using or substitution about F1 and F2 to find the value of F3, we know that F3 equals negative 3i, negative 4g, plus 12k, but the norm of F3 by using negative 3 for all power 2, plus negative 4 for all power 2, plus 12 for all power 2, under square root, answer is square root 9, plus 16, plus 144, answer is 13. Fourth unit. What you mean? We have three forces. If three forces act on the body and with your form, then sum of three forces or resultant of the resultant of the three forces equal zero or must be equal zero. The resultant what you mean resultant of three forces. We mean sum of three forces equal to zero. What you mean? F1 plus F2 plus F3 equals 0. We add F1 plus F2 to find the value of F3 by negative sign. Or we find F3 by ne equals negative F1, negative F2. After that, we calculate the value of F3, negative 3i, negative 4j, plus 12k. Remember, the sudden the force in this case in three direction in direction i direction j direction k in direction i negative 3 it's a component negative 4 in direction j second component 12 in third component k then what is the norm of this velocity the norm is square root the first component square, second component square, plus third component square, to find the value of the force, or the third force, F3 equal 13 force unit. Dear student, in this example, we know that if we have three forces acting on the body, the resultant equal zero. If we know the two forces to find the third force, we substitution about the first force and the second force to find the third force. After that, we find the magnitude by using norm, this vector force, by using square root, the first component power 2, plus second component power 2, plus third component power 2 equals